in Jaffrey Center, and if you're looking for a very special place to live, this just may be it. This little community of less than 400 people at one time had 38 people listed in who's who in America. Now that's one in 10. Think of what that would be in New York City. Let's see this. Eight million people, that would be a pretty big book. In the Jaffrey Center Meeting House, each Friday night during the summer, the community turns out to hear lectures at the Amos Fortune Forum. The program is free and open to the general public. Amos Fortune's remains rest in this graveyard behind the Center Meeting House. Now, Amos Fortune was a black African slave who lived in Boston, who in his old age purchased his freedom and moved here to Jaffrey, where he set up a tannery. The business did very well, and before he died, Amos Fortune was able to amass a sum of money which he left to the town for educational purposes. That money is used to this day as a prize for a speaking contest in the high school. This is his tombstone. It reads, sacred to the memory of Amos Fortune, who was born free in Africa, a slave in America. He purchased liberty, professed Christianity, lived reputably, and died hopefully November 17, 1801. He was 91 years old. And this tombstone says, sacred to the memory of Violet, by sale, the slave of Amos Fortune by marriage, his wife, by her fidelity, his friend and solace. She died his widow September 13th, 1802. She was 73 years old, and that's less than one year after he died. Remember Viggo Brandt Erickson, the man who created the statue of the Buddies down in Jaffrey? Well, this is his wife and infant daughter who died in childbirth. The baby is buried in its mother's arms. What love and grief created this monument. And this is a surprise to most people here in the center of New England. This is the grave of Willa Cather, whose novels and short stories of the Great Plains and the Kansas wheat fields are perhaps the greatest ever written. She once spent a short vacation here in Jaffrey Center, and it was at that time that she chose this spot to spend eternity. Well, that's it. That's our tour for today. Lots of things to see, awful lot of things to think about. If you stay on this road, it goes to Marlboro, and then it goes to Keene, where they have a lot of nice restaurants, where you can have a nice dinner, which is just exactly what we're going to do. Hey, happy motoring. You know, I love the town of Jaffrey, and I love the people in the town of Jaffrey, and I know from where I speak because I lived in the town of Jaffrey for about a dozen years. And from Jaffrey, we travel north and we travel east for an autumn tour which starts in the town of New Boston. Now, New Boston is noted for playing an important part in the American Revolution. But like the town of Marlow with its profile and the town of Jaffrey with its buddy statue, the town of New Boston also has a very famous stone face. It's called Monkey Rock. On August 16th, 1777, New Hampshire's General John Stark met the British at the Battle of Bennington. Yonder are your enemies, General Stark said. If you cannot prove yourself better than they, let Molly Stark sleep a widow tonight. Molly Stark, of course, did not sleep a widow that night. The battle, in fact, turned the entire course of the American Revolution. And this cannon was captured that day and given to the New Boston, New Hampshire Artillery Company for their valor. And the company, with affection for the general, named it after his wife. Ever since, this cannon has been called Old Molly. If you want to see this cannon, it's in the historical rooms right next to the New Boston Town Hall. And New Boston, of course, is the start of our just up the road Today. today, we are traveling from New Boston to Francistown via Route 136, just eight miles in all. But oh, what wonderful things there are to see on today's trip. New Boston has one of the best fishing rivers in the state, the Piscataquag. 
And right beside the river is this gorgeous old depot. It's used nowadays as a police station. And look at this. This is Dodge's real old general store. No fooling here. This is a store where the clerk goes and gets your groceries. No self-service, no nonsense. And proprietor, Joshua Dodge, will grind your coffee by hand on this ancient machine. 549. Got it. And over the store is this room where years ago the town held their town meetings. It's been unused for years. And here right in the center of town is the old Babson Gravity Institute building, old Roger Babson, who founded Babson College, had this institute here in town in that building. And there were meeting rooms there, and people used to come from all over the world to talk about gravity. Nowadays, the place is an apartment building. And three miles out on Route 136, going toward Francistown, we come to this. Look at this. This is Monkey Rock. Looks like a monkey, doesn't it? It's right by the side of the road here. The kids ride by in the cars with their parents, and they go, there's Monkey Rock. They get all excited. So do I. Does look like a monkey, doesn't it? Two miles up from Monkey Rock, and we come to this. This is the old foot farm. This is the largest attached barn in New England. Isn't it beautiful? You know, back in the mid-60s, there was a terrible fire here that destroyed a beautiful old Victorian house that used to be right there. And firemen from 15 towns turned out to save the barn. And, of course, they succeeded. This is the soapstone quarry in Francistown, New Hampshire. Back in the 1800s, more soapstone was taken out of this particular quarry than anywhere else in the world, not just in America, but in the world. Soapstone was used for sinks and for stoves and for carved mantelpieces. I say carved. The stuff is stone, but look at this. You can cut it like it was, like it was wood or something. You can cut it with a regular knife. This is my regular pen knife that I'm cutting. Look, see how that is? Isn't that amazing? Francistown is one of the best preserved colonial villages in New Hampshire. It's a treat just to drive through this lovely town. Along with these wonderfully restored homes, the town has a beautiful town hall, which years ago housed the Francistown Academy. And this, the Meeting House, built in 1801. Last spring, this building was sold by the Unitarian Church for one dollar to a local nonprofit corporation, which is restoring it. Daryl Radke is on the Restoration Committee, and he tells us the building has a unique interior structure. Just the way the balcony is construction, constructed. I'm not sure what an architect would call that kind of construction, but it's, but it's hung from the ceiling. And I think it's very, it was one of the very few in New England, if not the only one in New England, that's constructed that way. Now, Francistown has two other attractions that are worth noting. The first is Torrey Pines Resort. Torrey Pines has a world-class golf course. We end our tour here at the Crotchet Mountain Ski Area in Francistown. This is one of the nicest family ski areas anywhere. Well, that's it. That's our tour for today. Let's see. We've seen a cannon, and we've seen a coffee grinder, and we've seen a soapstone quarry, and we have seen one of the most spectacular barns anywhere. And, oh, Monkey Rock. Of course, Monkey Rock. Perfect tour for the kids, isn't it? Load them up. Hey, happy motoring. Now, Francistown is also the hometown to two internationally famous artists. One is printmaker Peter Milton, and the other is photographer Ozzy Sweet. Now, Ozzy has had photographs on the covers of 1,700 national magazines, and I'm talking magazines like Life and Look and Newsweek. He is a very talented photographer. Now, from Francistown, we go 20 miles due north, up to the town of Hopkinton, outside of Concord. Now, Hopkinton has great historical renown, and it also may be the luckiest place in America, and you are about to see why. by an even lovelier lady, 90-year-old Rachel Johnson, who for 40 years played the organ at St. Andrew's Episcopal Church here in Hopkinton, New Hampshire. And by no coincidence, Hopkinton is the subject of our Just Up the Road today.
Rachel Johnson is a native of...